So I saw this image a few months ago on a random website and I thought to myself how would it look if we made it into a stylized character, maybe close to something like Disney characters. So in this video I'm gonna show you how I turn this image into a more stylized version all in Blender. But before we start as always you can download the real time process video of making this character and lots of other characters from the channel on my Gumroad and Patreon page. Check out the link in the description. Let's go. Let's delete the default cube and start with a sphere this time. We're gonna drag the front to the bottom and push the neck area to the top. Add a multi res and subdivide so we have more topology. Carve in a hole in the eyes using a clay strip brush and put some clay on the nose part. Subdivide one more time. Then add the clay on the mouth area but leave the bottom part. Instead pick up a draw brush and make the chin a bit pointier. Then pick up a grab brush and shape the head based on the reference image. Then fix the scalp. We can use the grab brush to fix the proportions and distance between the nose and mouth. To create the eyelashes, first shift A and add a sphere, place it in the eyes. Then select the scalp again and using clay strip brush, put some clay on the eye socket to bring it out of the eyeballs. But you see we don't have enough topology, so let's give it a remesh modifier and decrease the voxel size so we have more geometry all around. Then control A on both modifiers to apply it. Back to sculpting, let's smooth out the weird parts by holding shift and start again on the eyelids. And this time fully bring out the mesh outside of the eye and leave just enough to shape the form of the eyes. Then slowly smooth it out without ruining the form of the eye. Make the edges more pronounced and visible. Make the nose a bit bulkier. And some on the mouth to make it bigger. Then smooth it out. From the side view, push the cheeks outside. Then using crease brush, start carving the lips on the mouth. Holding control while using a draw brush to push the bottom of the lips inside and form the mouth and chin. Then using crease brush again, hold control and draw a line around the mouth to make it look more like an actual lips. Sculpt the top on the bottom of the nose, then carve in the nostrils. Then start shaping the nose using a grab brush. We want a tiny pointy nose, so I drag it to the top just a bit. Make the lips a bit puffier and using crease brush, make the line close to the outside of the lips. Pick up a brush like crease brush, go around the nose and clean out the rough edges. Since we're working on an aging character, we don't make the eyelids too visible. Just add the edge to the outer line of the eyelids. Maybe a small crease right on the top eyelid. Let's work on the side of the face even more. We can use Disney characters as reference for the side view but it really depends on the style you're going for. For the ears just squeeze a cube, add more loop cuts so it has more topology to work with and then shape it. I want it to look like elf ears so I drag it to the back. Sculpt in the details in the ears, add a cube for the neck with a mirror modifier, extrude in it to the bottom then extrude to the side to form the upper body. Add a sphere for the shoulders, then shape it in the sculpt mold. After that let's add a cylinder and make it longer to use as the arms. Use the grab brush to push out the breast. I know you like this part. Select all of the body. Add a remesh modifier to actually fuse these meshes together. Start sculpting the neck using a clay strip brush. Then using the same brush start sculpting the chest piece. Then add the details to the breast. We're sculpting a female character after all. You knew it was coming. After that we can add a bit more muscles but not too much. Now that we're kinda done with the sculpting, it's time to retopologize the model. We start with the eye, just go around it and connect it to the other side of the face. I explained the whole retopology process thousand times on the channel, so I link you to the full tutorial I've made. Go ahead and click on the top right corner and watch them. After that we need to project it to our old model using a shrink wrap modifier. Then when we apply the shrink wrap modifier, we have all the details back on our new model. Fix the connected parts that are weird, like ears. Before texturing, we need to unwrap the UVs. First separate the head from the neck by marking the seams of the edges. Separate the head from the scalp to few different parts. Unwrap the UVs and place them in a tile. First add an image texture, create a new texture and connect it to the base color. Now I have a skin palette which I always use, you can find these skin palettes everywhere. Just drag out a new window, switch to UV editor, then open up that color palette, switch to texture painting so we can start painting. To use this color palette, we can hover the mouse over the color on the top and press E. Now we can click anywhere we want on the image to select that color as the color of the brush. I pick up the fill tool and fill out the whole mesh with that color. Then pick up a sort of darker color and start painting on some parts. Like like around the eyes, around the nose and maybe around the breast. Now choose a reddish color and start putting some on the cheeks. Slowly put some color on the lips but don't go overboard with the redness yet. I change the lighting a bit and switch to Eevee to see how it looks under lights. Then use a warmer color to make the skin look more alive. Maybe a red lipstick. Then add some highlights on the exposed parts. I explained the whole thing on this video right here. You can find it on the top right corner. Picked up a black brush and start adding eyeliner to the eyes. Since we enabled X mirror, whatever we do on 
on this side will be projected to the other side as well. Using a small size brush, I added some white freckles under the eyes and some on the nose. We can also control the shininess of the reflections using a roughness map. I painted the more shiny areas like the lips with darker color, then slowly add some around the face. I want to add some imperfection to the skin, so I found the PNG freckles and used it all over the face and body to create a more diverse skin color. Before I actually start adding hair strands, I add a sphere and shape it into what I imagine as the hairstyle. I keep remeshing the sphere so it be shapeable to anything I want. After I got the base shape, I add a bit of details to represent the hairstyle using a clay strip brush. I do it really fast because we don't want to waste time here. After that, hide the hair clump and extract the faces in the head area. We're going to use this plane as a base for our hair. We can bring our hair clump back and in the x-ray mode start to add the hair strands one by one. I add the hair strands from bottom to the top and shape each of them so it fits with the hair clump. I fully explained creating the hair in this video. Make sure you check it out. I use the hair clump as a direction for the hair. We don't need to add too much hair strands. We only need a few because we can fill in the middle using interpolate hair tool. Then by separating both sides and enabling part by mesh we can separate the hairstyle from the middle. I add some frizz and braid to make it look more realistic. Using in the same method, I add more hair to the front. Then add almost the same effects to the hair like the last time. After that, we can move on to the clothing. Since it's gonna be a tight dress, I use the body as the base for the clothing and just create the plane like retopology. I bring a sheer PNG image to Blender and connect it to the alpha. It's way too big. So let's add a mapping and coordinates node, then add a value node and connect it to the scale so we can change the size of these holes using this value. It's way too transparent, so I mix it up with white color using a mix color node. I extrude the plane few times to make a shape, give it the same material and place it behind the dress. For the diamonds on the dress, we can tackle it from different angles. We can use particle system, I rather use the blender groove method with the geometry nodes. Added the default diamond and cut out the bottom, then assign the geometry nodes to the dress and added the distribute point and instance node and brought our diamond to the mix using an object info node. I don't want the diamonds all over the dress, so in the weight paint mode, I color the parts where I want the diamonds to be distributed on. Then I give it a collection with different sizes and a shiny silver material. Moving on to the eyebrows. In the edit mode, I extract the faces on the eyebrows area and shape it a bit better. Added the hair strands just like what we did for the actual hair, then groomed it to the right. Again, we don't add too much, because we can fill in the gaps using an interpolate hair tool. For the eyelashes, we're gonna do the same thing as the eyebrows and line it up the curves with a the distance then bend in the middle of the curve like actual eyelashes Add in one more curve right next to the ones we already added and stick in the tips to each other to make it look more realistic. After we added other stuff, we can now fill in the empty spots. We already have a sphere for the eyes. Now we can extrude it to the front and use this one for the iris. We also need a crunkle, so I scale down the plane, extrude it, and add a bit of value to the surface in the sculpt mode. Selected the sclera, painted a light red color close to the edges. Forgot the bottom eyelashes, so I duplicate the upper eyelashes, rotate it, and place it on the bottom eyelid. Then painted a red texture over the crunkle and make an alpha mask for the edges, so it has a smooth transition to the sclera. Based on the reference, we got some sort of polka dot pattern going on on the iris, so I brought a PNG dot pattern and place them in the iris. For the ring light, we can simply go to edit mode, select the rim outside of the iris and give it an emission material so it lights up. According to the image, she has a white colored hair, so let's make the hair white. Now to make the rotating camera, in the right menu, enable the camera to view. We're gonna start from the left, so let's place the camera at an angle. Press I and make a keyframe here. Then we can move the timeline to frame 50 for example, place the camera facing the character and make a keyframe again. Moving forward to frame 100, rotate to the right and do the same thing. Now we have a moving camera from left to right. To add the handheld look to the camera, we can switch to graph editor, select the XYZ rotation and add a noise modifier. Scale it up and decrease the strength of the noise. Added the DOF to the camera and focus it mostly on the nose to add a more cinematic look. This is the comparison between our stylized version and the original. I went ahead and do my own twist on it and made it into this, which I'm gonna explain how on the next video. So be sure to like and sub so you won't miss it. And if you wanna download the real-time process of making this character or download the 3D files, you can go to my Gumroad and Patreon page to download it. See you on the next one. Peace.